Good morning, good morning. This is Jacqueline Richard Simmons, J.K. Diamond, Jackie Deja, whatever you call me. I hope everyone is doing well. I have to cut off my TV, my law and order, y'all. Oh, there it is. I forgot to cut it off before I got I went live. Uh, today, I wanted to talk about um, having a discipline, discipline plan. A lot of people don't understand me, um, the way I do things, and this is why I, most of the time, have, even when I don't have money, people still think I got money when I don't have money, um, because I have a very, very strong discipline, discipline plan. Uh, one, because I was raised by military people, um, that's one, two, um, I learned the way of God. And all of that plays a part. Discipline and sacrifice. Once you learn the way of God, um, you learn how to be disciplined. But I have a hard time connecting with others because they don't have that discipline. You know, I've met people in the military that don't even have discipline uh, that I have, you know, and it's it's, it's crazy, you know, um, when you, you watch these people and you say, well, why are you not disciplined? But it all starts in the home, you know, um, the factor of how you think, you know. But then sometimes your children go out into the world and then they lose um, what you've taught them, you know. <clears throat> and that's just what it is, you know. Um, I've always been disciplined, you know. Um, when I've had the most money and when I've had a little bit of money, you know. So I can <laughs> figure it out, you know what I mean, and um, maintain, you know. It's two things, and I tell people all the time, you know, if you read the Bible, you'll see that all of the stories in the Bible, they had a job, you know, a job to do. And they were rewarded for those jobs that they was given. You know, um, and this is what we have to learn to do, learn to discipline ourselves. You know, um... It's like I had told a young fellow yesterday, you know, his girlfriend was pregnant. And I told him, I said, come, come on, um, work where I work, you know. And um, just think about it. You know, you'll have two dependents. And he just looked at me like, huh, what are you talking about? And I said, you'll have two dependents, meaning you have your baby and your, your, um, your baby mother or soon to be wife. And he just looked at me, he didn't understand. And I said, God has given you, has blessed you with two people that if you go to work every day, you can claim those two people. Granted, he didn't understand. So hopefully he'll run into somebody else that'll tell him the same thing to confirm what I just told him. You've been blessed. Where if you would have went to work by yourself, the government would take everything from you. God has blessed you with two. Not one, just two. So now when you file taxes, because you won't work the job, you have more money to take care of your family. It's the reward behind it. You know, see, everybody wants to reward fast. That's not the way God works. You have to be disciplined. Okay? You know, people tell me, and I'm use this, this, this scenario, for instance. People say, oh, why you um don't want to get dreads? And why you won't braid your hair up? And why you won't do this and do that? Because it costs too much money. It's easier... For me to just use my own hair. Naturally. Okay. 
Um, sometimes I put a perm in it. Sometimes I won't. A perm costs six dollars. For me to get dreads, I gotta buy all of the products that goes with it, and get it done. Oh, I do hair, so I can do it myself. But I need the time. It's easier for me to just put my hair in a ponytail and keep it moving. Because being a professional, I have to stay neat at all times. That's the way it works in the work world. They want you to be neat, look professional, you know, as professional as possible. You know. And in other words, be disciplined. I went to the store yesterday. My weave that I normally buy runs me $180. Reason why is because it lasts for a very, very long time. Okay? I went to the store, and I, I looked at the hair, you know, the cheaper hair, and I'm like, ugh, I'm going to spend $40 for this, that in two weeks I'm going to have to take it out and spend another $40. That's 80 Okay, in two months, we're looking at 160 And just imagine if I had to pay somebody to do it. Luckily, I know how to do my own hair. Okay. How do I save money to do anything else? Especially when you own businesses. If y'all know how many business bills I had, y'all would, y'all would just fall apart just thinking about it. You know what I mean? It's not as easy as people think. But you have to be very disciplined. You know, people quit this because they see you doing business and they see you be, uh, being successful with what you're doing. They think it's easy for them to just pick up and get a, a business license and think that uh, they're going to be rich in, in, in a little while, you know. And I had to tell one of my friends that it doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. That's just the bottom line. Even when I bought my Snyder Lance route, I wasn't rich. I was maintaining. And then, on top of it, I had business bills to pay. And my house bills and kids to take care of. So being a business owner is always not the best thing. It's just that sometimes it's in our soul. Um, this is what we do. You know, I, I come from... Two parents that all they did was have the extra business on the side. And then my dad went head on with just his business and forgot about working. And this works his business. And it worked for him for a while. But then when business got slow, it was hard to survive. You know, these are the things that Trump used to try to tell y'all and explain to y'all. Y'all want to be business owners so bad, but are you ready to eat a can of tuna fish and that's all you get? Because you can't afford to eat anything else. Or a bowl of rice. The same with being a music artist. Everybody wants to be a music artist. You're up today and you're down tomorrow. Quite a step is the bottom of the totem pole. Okay? Because you can have a bunch of fans today and tomorrow you have nothing. How long is your run going to be? This is why you see most music artists become actors. You see most music artists um, <clears throat> owning their own businesses. And some working as well. This is not new. You know, they're trying to make it seem like because I go to work every day that, you know, as a music artist, that this is new. No, it's not new. It's been like this from the beginning of time since I've been alive. I've never known a music artist not to work. He was either working or selling drugs. And that's just the facts. Okay. And some of them just couldn't make it. It was hard. Shout out to Wu Tang. Let's talk about Old Dirty Bastard real quick. A lot of people don't remember him, you know. Um, 
He had a lot of kids. Even if he worked, he couldn't feed them kids. So he had to go to the government for help. So he he decided to to bring that to the board. Like, hey, you know, I could use this as a marketing tool because I could barely survive. I got to feed these kids. So, you know, think sometime when you say to yourself you want to do something that you know nothing about. One of my friends told me they wanted to be an actor. And I laughed. <laughs> I said, so you want to be a struggling actor, huh? That, that's the, the, that's the, the life that you want to take on. You want to be a struggling actor. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I see. You want the fight. You want to be hungry. And well, that's the life you choose. <laughs> That's on you. Because if you don't have nobody on your side to help you out while you're this struggling actor, you're not going to make it. You're going to be just like the other struggling actors, homeless, sleeping on somebody's beach, or on somebody's cot or couch. That's just what it is. Because you're not going to always get chosen. And then when they get tired of your face, get tired of your music, get tired of whatever you're doing, there's no more. It's a thing to tell me to think about if you decide to take on this, I want the same. Because you're going to really struggle. (laughs) You're going to really be in pain. Yeah, but some people have to physically go through it until they understand what it really is. Before I become a struggling artist or a struggling actress, I will continue to go to work. And that's just what it is. Because I'm not going to be hungry or homeless because... I didn't I didn't choose to get up every day and go to work because I'm waiting on someone to make that call to me. When my son decided to go into the industry, the first thing I told him, son, get a job. I said, get a job. He looked at me, he was like, what? Like, get a job, you know? And he quoted that in one of his songs, you know, that I had told him that. I forget what song it is, but he said, he says in the song, I said, Poppy, let's work. Because I've watched artists all my life struggle. This is why I used to run from the music industry. I watched them struggle. You have to have money. That's just what it is. Y'all always see the glamour of everything. But never know what a person had to sacrifice to get to where they are. And then don't want to understand why they're so disciplined. Because they don't want to go back to what they've been through. Why would I get high and get drunk when there's nothing to get high or drunk for? Why would I waste my money on that? Why 
Some people say they use it to calm their nerves. Calm your nerves from what? If you're not working, if you're not doing anything, there's nothing to calm your nerves for, from. Just think about some of the things that y'all do and say when y'all are running around wasting money. And then can't survive. And that's just the bottom line to it. I'm not going to go out and buy a bottle of champagne or a bottle of wine or some marijuana if I can't afford to pay my bills. Something has to give. People ask me why I smoke cigarettes. Because it's cheaper than buying marijuana and I know it relaxes me when I'm about to flip out on somebody. And it's the cheapest way to go. The same way um, people say to me, why you drink so many Red Bulls? I posted on Instagram today. Well, one, it keeps me from getting ill because it has B12, B6 complex in it. So that way I can continue to work. And it gives me energy, and it helps my brain because it has taurine in it. So, of course, I'm going to invest in that because it's helping me to continue to go out there and make more money. The taurine is helping me remember what I need to do to make more money. You know, then they want so much from you in the industry. The music industry, you know, oh, uh, when you go out, they want to see your nails pretty. They want you to be like this. I want you to be like that. Why? I'm not on a stage right now. So why do I have to keep up this, this, um, and see, this is where social media messed up everything because everybody wants to be a star. Everybody needs to be a star. But do you know what the real stars really go through? I'm different. You know. I do both sides. The business and the um, the music. Like, I just told, I, I made a video, they wouldn't let me post it. Of course. <laughs> Social media is so controlled. <laughs> and I laugh about it. You know, they gave me monetization to do, tic- uh, uh, not TikTok, uh, what you call it, videos. But yet and still, I get less views now than I did before. So why put my time into it? If it's not bringing me what I need, I'm not going to do it. And that's what people fail to see. Okay? It's like people thought because I was making music, they thought I wasn't getting paid for it. Because I didn't show you guys that I wasn't getting paid for it. But then I decided to show y'all that I was getting paid for it. That's why I kept doing it. It wasn't a whole lot in the beginning, but it was something. So why show you guys? And then I even showed you, I even showed y'all some, some, some stuff. But it still told me that, okay, you, you, you rising, but you still need to find another way to make money. The same with my diamond way. I sell my products. But until the people use them and want to buy more, I'm sitting broke. I can't live like that. I have bills to pay. I don't have nobody taking care of me. I don't have nobody paying my rent, paying my car note, 
paying, t- um, putting food in my mouth. So I have to move on to the next thing. Just like y'all see me go out and sell drinks. And then I had planned to do an IC card, different things like that. But some of these things you can't do alone. You, you need a partner, you know. But people don't see the just of it. All they see is that you have money. You swiping your card. But I worked for that. They think it come easy. So you can just spin it, spin it, spin it, spin it, spin it. It's okay. Or they can borrow or, you know what I'm saying, and, and, and ask you for this money and you give it to them. And, you know, they don't understand that that could have been a bill that you needed to pay. That you sacrificed for them. They don't get that. They just see the glamour and the money. Then they say they want to be just like you. They get jealous and they, oh, I want to be just like you. All right, what I'm going to do is she or he do. But then when they see how hard it is, they like, well, well, damn, this is too much. I had a friend of mine tell me, you work too hard. Yeah, well, that's why I have more than you do. Because I work hard. They give up. They don't want to work hard. They don't have dreams of having more. I've worked hard all my life, 30 years. And I tell people every day I'm tired. You know, they think, oh, because I say I'm tired, they don't want to die. No, I just want to live. I want to be able to live. Be able to go to lay down and, and wake up and say, what am I doing today? Because I don't have to work. I don't have to get on social media. I don't have to do a podcast. I don't have to run my nonprofit. I don't have to do all these other things. I can do something for me. I can take up a hobby. But don't ask me how I've gotten everything that I've gotten because I worked for it. Sick and everything else. I ran into a friend yesterday. She was telling me how she was at work. And she had caught the COVID from one of the people at work. She had 107 fever. Which is damn near, you about to just lay it down after that. You know what I'm saying? Um, you need some fluids and stuff. So there's a lot going on. You know what I mean? And um, she was still working. She said, I was hallucinating. She didn't stay working because she is crazy. She stayed working because she knew she went home. Her check is going to be less than what it's supposed to be. And she needed her money because she had a dream that she was trying to fulfill. I see people stereotype us people that go to work every day. And I don't understand why, because most of the people that y'all stereotype and have more than y'all. I was mad when I came to Charlotte and they wouldn't let me work because I was a music artist. Nobody will hire me because I'm a music artist. So I'm like, you got to be kidding me. I need to go back home. I need to go to New York. Because best to believe somebody will hire me. They don't, give a, they don't give a damn if you're a music artist or not because they know music don't pay no money unless you're on somebody's stage or you are on a, doing a concert. Okay? I don't care how many bars you, you still you, you, you perform and you still ain't making no money. Even when they do concerts, they don't, they don't make a whole, whole lot of money. You would think they make, you know... Uh, a half a million dollars when some of them is just coming off the stage with 70,000, 100,000 and that's no money. When you have to live day to day, month to month and pay bills. And if you got these fancy cars and fancy houses, it costs money if it's not paid for in cash.
And then you got these artists, you know, they, they make fun of them. Like, you know, I'm, I'm going to use Jim Jones, for instance. You know, he had a beautiful home, you know, with the pool out in Jersey, you know, and things got rough. And they just couldn't afford it no more, so they had to let it go. Oh, they had to put it in the tabloids. It's not their fault that business was slow. And they had to downgrade. That's the way it works. But people don't want to understand the reality of what this thing really is. When you get these lump sum of money, you have to discipline yourself. You can't be going out here buying all the expensive stuff and and, and, and you you, you got to choose. What is it going to be? The roof over my head or I'm going to continue to buy all this expensive stuff? I told myself I'm going to be buying a house soon. Okay, I, I, I wanted to do it with my mate, but he decided that's not what he wanted, so he kept it moving. You know what I mean? And I had I had to dis- discipline myself. There's certain things that I had to cut up, cut out of my life, so I can have that extra money to do the things that I want to do. That's my first priority right now. Nothing else is a priority to me right now. The diamond way is not a priority. The um, because unless I'm bringing in. Enough money to get me a, 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 a mortgage. It's not a priority. I still have it. It can go away and come back later. That's the purpose of getting my documentation. This is why we get documentation. So we can have it for a long period of time. And don't have to worry about somebody stealing it or, you know, looking at something in the store and be like, oh, that damn, that, that's supposed to be my stuff. But you go with priority first. And that's just what it is. Now, if it means that I have to take away all of the, the fancy hairstyles, doing it every two weeks, or I'm not shopping for a long period of time, just necessities, you know, um, it, 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 whatever I got to do, I got to discipline myself. This is the way it works to get what I need. It's called sacrifice. And if you're not willing to sacrifice for greater later, you'll never make it. This is just what it is. You have to learn to sacrifice. This is why I tell people to pick up the Bible. You know, people say, you know, they, they, they run from it. Why are you running from something that's good? That's teaching you how to do this thing. How to have everlasting life. Here on earth. Mean happiness. You don't run from happiness. What we call those is toxic people. Those that run from happiness. Because they don't want to sacrifice. And. And um. Pretty much sit it down until they get what they need. So we put those people in a different category. Those are people that, you know, we just don't deal with. Because we know they don't want anything out of life. Because we must sacrifice. That's the way God designed it. Like, I hate the fact that the government takes most of our money. I hate it. 
But what are we to do? It's nothing that we can do about it. We can't control it. And it, it hurts us really bad. You know, it, it, it tears us apart because we say we'll never win. Because it's designed that way. This is what they do to us. This is why they have destroyed America. And this is why we need new government. So they can see what America has done to us. What America has done to businesses. They have made businesses believe that they can do whatever they want to do to the consumer to take their money. Because this is what um, they do. We don't even have rights to our own, to Social Security after they take it year after year after year until we get a certain age. If I'm telling you my body is hurting, I'm tired, why can't you give me back some of my money for a little period of time? So my body can rest so I can continue to move on? Because if you keep working me like this, I'm going to be dead and you're going to take my money and give it to somebody else. That's not fair to me. And that's what our government is doing to us. This is why we need new government. For those that don't understand what's going on right now. We work. For them to take everything to run this country. And it backfired with COVID. It backfired. They say anything you do in the dark will come to the light. And it's what our government has done. They didn't realize what they were doing to the people. We get it. But if y'all don't know how to run the government, they hand it over to people that do. To make our lives better. So we all all won't be out here on drugs, drinking, and partying for no apparent reason. It's blowing our money because we know we don't. We will never have anything. We won't have people out here having babies just to stay on welfare. I have a friend of mine. <laughs> he looked at me. He said, oh my gosh, she's, she's going to fall. She needs a baby. <laughs> and I started laughing, you know. He wanted to give me a baby. So I will be able to survive. I got to bring another life in this world to suffer so I can have another dependent. So I'll be able to go get food, food stamps if I need it. Do you see what y'all have done to our people? But then y'all want to say we're all bad. You designed us to think the way we think. And this is why it came back to y'all. And this is this, this, right, what I'm saying right now is the co- I'm talking about the government. They have designed everything to destroy us. And we sit down and we think and we try to figure it out. How am I going to survive this? Just like myself right now. I sit back every day and tell myself, how am I going to survive this? 
running all these businesses, plus trying to keep a, a roof over me and my daughter's head because I'm a single parent. How am I going to survive this? When I put it in the hands of God, and I tell myself, okay, now it's time to put that battery pack in your back. You got to make this, you got to make it happen. You got to make something shake any means necessary. That's what our government has done to us. Even me. So I say all that to say, you know, people, if you got somebody good in your corner, hold on to them. Try to stay healthy. Deal with the things that you can control and the things that you can't control. Give it to God and let him handle it. No need to worry about it. Just figure out another way. I met a guy yesterday. He he was telling me how his baby mother, you know, that he got two kids and he's paying child support. And he's not on papers. He just gives her money and buys clothes and whatever the case may be. And he owns a business. He says, you know, the only problem, he said, I love my business and I get I get the sales. And I'm always out hustling. And I'm able to give my baby mother what she needs for my kids. So I asked her, why won't you let me file one of the kids? Now, She's not thinking. If he's giving you money on a regular basis and he's out there hustling, which is hard to come. That's why I take my hat off to, you know, some of these entrepreneurs out here, you know. That builds a store, a strong team that believes, you know, and will go out there and hustle. I take my hat off to those guys. Legally. And all they want to do is do right. And you always got to have one devil devil in the mix. You see him doing right. Give it to him. You know? I have a couple of friends of mine that I had to say, let's go out and make some money, you know, this summer. Anything that you got to put upon someone else, you can't depend on, put it, put it like this, you can't depend on others. Because instead of them trying to build a team with you to make more for both of you, they want to try and build their own team and start from the bottom. When you already up the ladder. That's where the jealousy comes in at, you know. I had told one of my friends, you know, that was supposed to get on my team and let's work and get this money. So I had to bring in some other friends that have businesses to let them know how long it takes to build the business. And how hungry you gonna be throughout that process. <laughs> Why put yourself in that room when you don't have to? Not just yet anyway. But they prefer to open up their own business and struggle than to help you and live good. That's the way people think. Jealousy over everything. I I need to be like you. Well, it took me 10 years to get to where I'm at. So if you're willing to go through 10 years of heartache and pain when I, God has said, no, I don't want you going through that heartache and pain right now. I, I, I want you to help build over here so that way you could be OK because it's not your time to go through heartache and pain. But you put yourself there anyway. This is what people do. So then you laugh at them and you say, <laughs> how stupid can you be? So 
So you want to struggle. This is not the time to struggle. Everything is at its all time high. Everything. So you decide you want to struggle now. Okay. That's your choice. This is why we we given choices. Every time I go fill up my tank, which I got to do today, I get sick. Because I bought my car. Uh, let, me, let me tell y'all why I bought the car that I bought. See, I used to drive an expedition every day to work. <laughs> every week I spent $200 in gas. It looked good. I had to get the tires changed. I used to run me $800. $200 a tire, oil change, tune-up, $600 car note, car insurance. Just in the car loan, okay, on a regular basis. Just the car, okay. I was spending roughly 1500 a month. Roughly, okay. I had... um. Made a post. McMill had wrote me, you know, saying thank you for helping him um, market his music. You know, people think that, you know, um, it doesn't help, but it does. However, and I told him, I said, you know, I heard your song. I'll never forget. It was December. I was working at Frito Lay in, de- in December. November, December, it gets real slow at Frito Lay, so you get your basic pay. Now, mind you, I just told you I pay fifteen hundred just for my car, okay? Then I still got rent to pay, kids to take care of, and I was helping my mother, okay? So her sister was broke, okay? And this was the facts. I had about $200, and I'm saying to myself, how am I going to get my kids some Christmas gifts? And then I told myself, well, if I wouldn't be celebrating Christmas, I wouldn't have to worry about this, you know? Why are you not doing it the godly way? I said, because I love the way Christmas is designed. So I want to be a part of it. Okay, this is where sacrifice comes in at. So meanwhile, you know, my daughter's looking at me. I'm looking at her. And I'm like, well, why don't you get a job? And she's like, oh, okay, I'll try. But she had a job that she messed up on working at Free LA. So you your money would have been there if you would have just took the job that they gave you. But she chose that she didn't want to do it. Now we're struggling. So I said, you know what? I'm, I'm going to take my chances. I'm going to pray. And we're going to ride uh, to the casino. I went to Double Downs in, um, in Delaware. And I prayed on it. I said, God, I need this money to help these kids. We, you know, I love Christmas. And we was driving, and she was turning the radio station, and she was like, oh, this is this new rapper. Um, I don't know his name, but I like this song. And the song was Amen, and she played it. Oh, and I was listening to, we was listening to Tiger, and we was listening to Meek Mill. And, and I was pregnant at this time as well. I was pregnant with Egypt. And um, we drove to Double Downs, listening to Amen. And, I mean, not everything he was saying in there was godly, but majority of it was. And I received it, okay, what he was, what he was talking about. You know, a lot of people may not have received it because they don't understand God and how God works. You got even some pastors that don't even understand God. They think they do, but they don't. So I get to the casino. I put my first 20 in. And I play. On my last spin, I hit for $1,800. So my daughter was like, oh, my God, how did you do that, Ma? I said, I didn't. God did. Because he knew I needed it. And she's like, well... I said, I'm going to leave 100 in there, and I'm going to take the rest out. I'm going to play that back. You know, if I win anything, I do. If I don't, it is what it is. And, of course, I lost $100, and 
and I took the 1700 and I went home and bought my kids their Christmas gifts. And ever since then, I've been a fan of Meeks, okay, and Tiger. Because they were riding with me through that journey. Their voices was riding with me through that journey. People may not understand it, but that's what it was. That led me to Meek Mill. So when I saw him again, it was like, that's the same guy. I know that voice. That's the same guy. Who is he? My daughter's father told me who he was because they were both from Philly. And I understand his struggle, you know, because that struggle is not just with um, music. It's it's in any um, industry. Y'all know retail is the biggest industry, and I've been in the retail business for a very, 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 very long time. Um, and you know you're going to have that struggle. You know, so you have to prepare for it. See, I'm experienced at it. Some people are not. It's like I was at T-Mobile yesterday. And I told a girl, you know, she could tell she was young and, you know, whatever was going on at the T-Mobile with neighbors messing with my monies and all this other stuff. And she was looking all stressed out. And I said, don't take it personal. I said, this is just what it is. And, and she looked at me. I said, legally, I've been in sales for over 16 years. You never take it personal. The consumer has the power. Okay? Because I don't have to spend my money with you. And that's just what it is. And I had explained to her. I said, you know what? I could just cancel my contract. Tell them that they forfeited their contract. Okay? By adding stuff on my lines that I did not authorize. That's illegal. And move my service to another company. It's simple. I don't have to argue with you. About trying to take my money. I could just leave. That's the way it goes. So fix the situation. You can't just do what you want to do with people's money. They're the power. If they didn't buy, there would be no business. I know T-Mobile is a very good company. You know, they they took Metro in. They took Sprint in. Now all three of them is going up against AT&T and Verizon. But if you notice... AT&T, AT&T is by themselves, and Verizon is by themselves. They have enough customers to hold it down. Those other two companies needed an umbrella. So that's what they did. They umbrellaed them. They helped them out. And then long term, it should help make... The head company more money. And that's the way it works in the retail world. They try to save a company before it falls. You know. But in the industry, in the music industry, it doesn't work that way. That's why they the the the, the lease on the totem pole. That's why the, the music artists don't get the respect that they supposed to for the work that they, they put in, the sacrifice. You know, that they put in, they don't get those things. So they started giving them a little bit more perks, you know, for being a music artist. 
you know, back in the day, you used to get them things free. Now we get things discounted. Heavy discounted. Because they know we can't even survive. So when people look at the glam and like, how you get this and how you get that? Damn, you got everything. Oh, it's because I'm a music artist and it's been discounted so I can afford it. That's the facts. The truth to it. <laughs> That's the perks that we get. The same in retail. We get perks over there, too. That's the way it works. We have a good quarter. The business comes up with something to give the people. That's the way it works. That's like when I go to work at my job, Amazon, you know, I try to find ways to save money for the company. If it's just saving a piece of paper, a sticker. Because if we save money for the company, the company may say, hey, yo, we we, we made a good amount of money. We saved money on this. We didn't have too much theft, loss and prevention. Hey, we're going to get this back to our employees. Let's up the raise. Let's raise, you know, give them a raise. That's the way it works. But because people don't know the industry, they don't get it. You got more supervisors wasting money than you do the employees. It hurts me when, because I'm a business owner. So if I lose one thing, it's going to hurt me, okay? And then you have this big company, this big billion-dollar company, a trillion-dollar company that (laughs) is losing a whole lot from multiple people not caring. It it, it just, like, shocks my body. Like, oh, God, damn, I can imagine his pockets. They pockets. You know what I mean? All these people just doing this and doing that. And then, oh. Because I'm a business owner. I know what it's like when I lose one or two things, let alone a million. It's called sacrifice for the business. It makes a difference. Whether you're on the team or you're building something for yourself. You have to discipline yourself. And that's just what it is. I guess I'm I'm a lot different from a lot of people, you know. I'm blessed, though, to have learned how to discipline myself. But in the same sense, sometimes I make things hard for myself. Like right now, I have a job and I have all these businesses and still got to maintain a home. Something is going to get neglected. Because it's just too much. Because my body and mind has to be ready. So I can keep my home and keep the things that my child needs and I need or whatever the case may be. And you have to think that way. You know, you, you can't be perfect. No one is perfect. And that's why I tell, like, you know, guys that I meet, you know, I, I laugh at them. Because they want perfect. How is it you want perfect, but you're not putting nothing in for you to get perfect? The moment that you take slack off of me, maybe you'll get perfect or close to perfect because nobody's perfect for Jesus Christ. But you haven't taken any slack off of me. So you're not going to get perfect. I had my my ex-boyfriend going to tell me, you always running, you always here, you always there. Because he called me, where you at? I'm over here. Where you at? I'm over here. 
You're never home. Okay, well, I have to work. The moment that you come and say, hey, here's some money. I need you to stay home and, be, and, and, and spend time with me. Then I'm able to do that. But until then, catch me when you can. Because I got I to gotta make money. I got to do stuff. This is what I do. I'm giving up on a social media thing because some of the things I can't do alone, you know, I need someone like to take the videos and, and I don't have nobody that's dedicated to do that or to help me with it, you know, to, um, and it takes a lot of time out of my day to try to do a skit or something by myself, um, to put on social media. Instagram don't want to accept it that, you know, they gave me the monitoration. I, I'm thankful, but it's it's going to take too much time out of my day to try to do skits and stuff when it's not guaranteed money. It's guaranteed money for me to clock in at Amazon. And I need that guaranteed money because I have businesses to run. I have websites that I pay for. I have $80 in just... um. Between websites, <coughs> podcasts, because I have two websites, one for Ms. JJ Diamond, one for my Diamond Way. I have two domains that they have to be paid for. Every two years, I have to pay for them in order to keep it. I have to pay for those websites every single month. I have to pay for my podcasts. I have to pay to re-up for all my business when I sell all my products or when I use them because I'm I'm, I'm, I'm the number one user of the products. I still have to put that money back. So I don't have time and I have to clean my house, I have to cook, I have to maintain my daughter. I don't have time to be making videos for social media. That's not guaranteed money. So it has to go. They wouldn't post my video that I had made yesterday, telling the facts. So I'm doing it on my podcast. So that way, when y'all don't see me making videos, this is why. I don't have nobody here to supplement my income. I have to focus on working. I have to focus on my second business, That's which is my IC card. Um, I was trying to prepare myself um, to go out tomorrow, but I don't know if that's going to happen. Uh, one, because I need to put my cart together. Two, they need you to have nails on for you to um, be on social media. And they want you to look pretty. I can't do all of that with nails. So it's just not for me. When it's time for me to do my music and be on social media, then that's when I'll get my nails and my hair done and all that other stuff. Until then, I don't need it. I'm not doing it. This is where I come in to discipline myself. I'm not spending excess money that I don't have. In hurting myself. To benefit something that's not paying me. And that's just what it is. People need to understand. I have a lot of bills, so I have to discipline myself. It's not because I'm broke. It's because I'm trying to pay my bills, and I'm saving my money, and I'm disciplined. Y'all have to learn to stop stereotyping people. This is what I loved about Maryland, because all the rich people walked around with holy pants and dirty sneakers. But they'll pull 10 million out on your ass. And that's the facts. Or maybe more. Because their goal is not to impress people. I want to leave the music industry too, but I can't. So I'll impress the people when I get the chance. I don't have time for it. 
I have money to make. So y'all can stereotype, y'all can talk, and I'll keep laughing to the bank. And that's the way it works. Because after I take these nails off right here, that I have now, there will be no more until I get what I need. And that's just what it is. Y'all can talk. Y'all can say what y'all want to talk. Say, I don't care. I've never been the one to care about what other people thoughts. So I just wanted to bring that to the table. And let y'all know. My goals right now is just to continue to help the kids learn, get what I need, and live in peace. And right now, I'm not in peace. I need a house. And I constantly keep telling y'all this. I feel like I'm being crowded in my house. I have so many clothes that they're coming out the closet. I need a whole bedroom as a closet. I have to make it happen. I can't keep buying clothes to present to you guys. And don't have no space to put them. Does that make sense? You have to make it make sense. I got shoe boxes outside of my closet because they can't fit in there. I have to get a house. Yes, I'm desperate to get a house so I can have space because I don't like to be crowded. And that's just the bottom line. So I have to discipline myself so I can get what I need. And I'm not paying nobody $1,700 rent. I'm not doing it. Anytime I'm putting $1,700 out there, I got to put it into an investment. I'm not going to be paying nobody no $1,700 rent. I'm not doing it. Y'all fools could do it. But I'm not doing it. And I say fools because there's a lot of fools out here to do it. There's people that pay. It's funny because my friend sat the garbage, my garbage outside my door. And I told him, I said, um, we don't, we don't, we don't do that here. Okay. We don't live in the buildings where they come and pick up the trash. You know, we got to take it to the trash, you know, because I'm not going to spend $1,700 or $2,000 a month. And then spend another $300 a month on top of that so I can have my trash picked up. No, I'm going to work and walk into the dumpster. Because if I had my own home, I'm going to walk the garbage can to the corner for the garbage man to pick it up. I don't care if I live in a million dollar home. I still got to walk the trash to the dump, to the, to the garbage can and push the garbage can out so the garbage man can get it. Even the rich people walk the garbage can to the corner so the people can pick it up. So I'm going to invest all my money into somebody else's high-rise building because I want to be lazy and don't want to walk the garbage to the dumpster. Make it make sense. No. No. Those are for them fools, not me. Don't put me in that category. Because he says I'm bougie. So I guess he figures I should not walk my garbage to the garbage can. Bougie people take their garbage to the garbage can too. And I don't look at myself as being bougie. But... 
I know one thing, I'm not giving no high-rise building my money when I can invest it in my property. Why would I pay for an apartment for money that I'm not going to get back? I'm going to put it into a home. If I got to struggle, I'm going to struggle for something. If I, I, I mean, that's just, just the way I think. Now, you know, you got a lot of people out here that think like me. Then you have a lot of fools out here too. That just wants, want the limelight and want the, 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 the fame of things. Well, guess what? I want the money. Y'all can have the fame. Y'all could be, you know, because I tell y'all all the time, I've been out there with all the fame, okay? And you wake up and you, you, your people is on the news. You see your name in highlights. Your last name. Or you on the front page of the newspaper. Or your people on the front page of the newspaper. I've had the fame. I don't want it. It did nothing for me. It didn't put no money in my pocket. Only thing it did was help people be a little bit nicer to me. I don't want it. It's not a need for me. And I keep trying to tell people this. I want to be known for good things. Not people always shouting me down because they want to be like me or they're jealous of me or they don't like me and don't even know me. Let me tell you I I fell down at work and I laughed, you know, they kept saying, oh my gosh, the people ran to you and helped you when you fell. I looked at him like, okay. Then they brought it up again. Like they just couldn't believe it. Why not? I'm not a bad person. I speak to people. I help people. And I really didn't even know these people. But because I speak to them and say good morning or good afternoon or we laugh about a joke because we work at the same place. They knew the face. That just gave me more people that I can actually build with. Because now they ask me, am I okay every day? And I ask them, are they okay every day? And inquire about their lives. And and ask them if if, if they need something. Sometimes all it takes is a smile. But when people don't have that built within them, they can't understand how... You can be so popular to where people will run to your aid when when, when needed. It's not my fault your generation wasn't brought up the proper way. And this is why we, us older ones, are trying to teach y'all. You don't have to be the one to fit in and be drinking and getting high and partying every day in order to become popular. You don't have to go out there and be the biggest thug in order to be popular. Sometimes all it takes is a smile, a joke, being warm to people. That's all it takes. They call me a social butterfly. I've always been. Even though I shelter myself. Because sometimes you get tired of being a social butterfly. You don't want to talk. It's like I go outside, you know, people be waiting. Sometimes they know who I am. They waiting for me to give them a business card. And I look at them and get in my car and shut it and keep it moving. 
I'm not hungry for money today. I don't feel like talking today. I'll say hello. But I'm not trying to force my business on you. Because I need a break too. It's not easy being a business owner or entrepreneur. Especially when you're doing it by yourself when others don't believe. And now that I done showed them, now everybody wants to be like me. Well, go ahead and starve. Go ahead and struggle. If that's what you want to do. Because you didn't see my back half. You only see the front half of what was presented. After the fact. You didn't see what I went through. You didn't see how many people was turning me down. You didn't see how I struggled to get the money. How many days I had to work out there on Instacart, in the dark, in the hood, praying, trying to get the money to pay for some of this stuff. In the rain, on dirt roads. Nobody's seen all of that. But it seemed no struggles. Even working my job. When I used to work at Freedom, and I was making good money. Nobody seen the 18 hour days. Me being sick with my allergies, holding my head because I'm, I, I, I got a fever. Or I'm in pain. All they can see is. Oh, her kids stay with the fresh kids. She pushing a a $60,000 vehicle. Oh, she just bought a Snyder's route. That's all they seen. But they didn't see the pain I had to go through day after day after day after day. Not seeing my children. I had a store in Baltimore... They were so angry with Frito Lay because I couldn't spend time with my children with building displays, doing this, doing that. And it was like, you know, Jackie, if you need to bring the kids, bring the kids just so they could be with their mom. And I would bring them. They would give them things to do, talk to them, tell them, hey, we love your mom. She makes sure everything is perfect before she leaves this store. They didn't understand at Frito how I was so popular in that particular store. It was like, oh, she's like a star. Because I put the work in. If I had to do a double back. Because my product didn't get there on time. Or something just wasn't right. I would do whatever I had to do. Because when Frito-Lay hired me. They hired me to do a job. And make sure I completed. it. So I learned everything that I needed to learn. To make sure I'm successful out there. And that comes with listening. That's something people don't do anymore. It's like the other day, this girl rolled up on me. And um, I was trying to fix my um, tape machine. And it just wasn't doing right. And um, she was, oh, well, let me help you. I said, okay. So she did it and still ain't do right. And um, she said to me, "Um, what did she say? Something where, well, I can't remember what she said, 
But it led to, well, how long you been here? And so, oh, a year and nine months, almost two years soon. You know, she said, I thought you was new. I said, no. She said, well, why did you let me help you? And I was like, because you might know something that I don't. And she just looked at me. I said, and I had to break it down to her real quick. I said, um, sometimes I stand back and just listen. Because you might be able to teach me something I don't know. I'm not going to just stop you in your tracks. If you, if you give me help, I'm going to accept it. That's the way it's designed. That's the way God has designed it. Someone offers their help. Let them help you. Because help is scarce today. Everybody works for the devil. They want to see you struggle. So if you find somebody that's godly enough to say, hey, let me help you. You take that help. Not all help is good help. And you may know more than what that person knows. But sometimes it's it's, it's good to stand back and see what type of person you're dealing with. I've always been that type of person. You know, I've never been that one. I don't need your help. But if you're going to act like um, you better than me and I I, I got to depend on you, yeah, then I'm going to say, hey, I don't need your help because that's bad help. You know, you got you got you got what they call it, fake love. Yeah, that's what that is. Fake love. You don't want that in your life. Toxic fake love. You don't want that. You want the real stuff. People that's going to come in and teach you something. People that's going to be there to to help you do things. Somebody you can depend on. A lot of people like thought that... I wanted to be back with my old boyfriend. I'm bringing this up because I want to let y'all know I would never go back to my old boyfriend. Okay. I'm talking about the last two old ones. I would never go back to them too. So I just want to clarify that with you guys as well. Okay. So y'all can stop the nonsense on social media. Y'all can stop the nonsense in the streets. Okay. When I'm done, I'm done. They have nothing for me. I'm not going to be filling them back and forth with different men. I'm not going to do that. Because I'm on a level of life that I don't have time to fiddle back and forth with you. Either you're serious or you're not. If you're not, get the fuck on. Excuse my language, y'all. I shouldn't be, you know, this morning. But that's just the facts. I got too much to lose. To be worrying about how a nigga feels about whatever. Either you on the bandwagon and you riding this wave or you're not. Gone. It's simple. Don't make it harder than what it is. I got to live in peace. Because I got things to get. I got goals to, 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 um... To handle. And that's just what it is. Uh, goes to, 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 to complete. So they can play the games by themselves. You know, little kids play games. I'm not a little kid. And I don't have time for it. I have to continue on with my life because I have bills to pay. I have things to do. I don't, I don't, I don't have 
trying to be filling in with you. I need to know that you are serious, that you really want this, and I need to see progress. I need to see <coughs> you working towards something. And if you're not, and you're not working towards something with me or something on your own, I don't want to be bothered. And that's just the facts. I don't want to be bothered. If you're not here to make my life easier, you know, and my new friend said that to me. He said, I'm supposed to be here to make your life easier. So I said, so make it easier then. I I haven't seen where you made it easier yet. You can talk a good game, but until you show me, mm mm. You got to show me. Will you making it easy? That's just what it is. I'm a little bit different from other people. I guess that's why it's hard for people to figure me out. And they pull back because they're like, this is different. This is not what I'm used to. But um, if you always get what you're used to, you're going to always have the same outcome. Yeah, people don't recognize that. You want different. So that way you'll get a different outcome. That's the way it works. Anyway, guys, I just want to throw some things out there and and teach y'all about how to discipline yourselves and the things that I do, you know, to help me discipline myself to get to get to a goal, you know, um... And just to let y'all know about some things that's going on with me. So y'all won't be hearing from me on a podcast maybe once or twice a week. Um, and social media, I'm, I'm, I'm just done with social media. I'm tired of it. I'm just fed up with it. You know, I wanted to be uh, TikTok. I wanted to do make money for TikTok. That's what I wanted to do. Um, that didn't fall through the way I wanted it to fall through. I worked hard to get, you know, my thousand... Uh, my thousand um, followers so I can go live. You know, I go live and it's just not working out. You know, the people's not coming in. So I'm just like, look, I don't, I don't have time for it. Then Instagram opened up their door for me, you know, but I'm not getting what, you know, I, I feel like I should. How am I getting more views from the past? And then now I'm getting less views. I, I just stopped. I'm letting it go. I don't have time for it. I got some other stuff I got to do. And to worry about uh, where's my ring light and, oh, let me put some makeup on and put some clothes on and and jump around in front of the, the damn uh, phone, you know, to, to try to make money. No, I, I can't try to make money anymore. I have to make money. It's just the bottom line. So I hope y'all understand. This is just what it is. This is Jacqueline Richardson, Mitch J.J. Diamond, Jackie Deja, whatever y'all call me. Y'all be safe. Have a safe Memorial Day weekend. And, you know, don't drink and drive, y'all. Because they're going to be out there. Y'all know the cops and the state troopers is going to be out there. They're out there every single year. It doesn't change. So don't get caught up because you're going to look stupid. If you're over 21 and you've been out there partying and drinking and every year, you know these things. Like Just like we know the holidays are coming every single year. You know this. So you're going to be, as they call it on Power 98, the dummy of the week. Because you know these things. It doesn't change. It's the same every year. So don't get caught out there drinking and driving, y'all. Have a designated driver. Or just don't drink. You can have fun without being drunk. And that's the facts. I love y'all. Y'all take care.